Hey sketchy friends, I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, I am obviously back with another video um, and I thought I would do a video um, showing you a sketch that I did in 2017, I think it was, um, and sketch it again today um, and just sort of see how far I've come really. I think it's quite interesting um, judging the exact same subject, a sketch of the exact same subject matter side by side just to see like what you do differently now and you know things that you just wouldn't even, you don't even consciously kind of really think about it. Um, so yeah, I really hope you enjoy checking out this video um, and let's get into it. So this is a pub I am gonna sketch, it's um, the Mill Tavern in a town called Hazelmere in Surrey. Um, which is not far away from where my family live um, and when I'm in the UK I'm sort of like around this area um, so I've frequented this pub many a time for a few pints and I've also sat outside it and sketched it um, so I took this photo the same day I sketched it um, but I am not going to use um, that sketch to compare with today I'm going to use another sketch of it that I did shortly afterwards when I was at home because I thought it was only fair really because the sketch I'm going to do today is at home not outside so I wanted it to be a fair, pretty fair comparison. Um, so this is the sketch I'm going to um, compare myself again against. So again yeah did this like you know in 2017 I think it was so a good three years ago um, and at the time I was pretty happy with the sketch to be honest. I was kind of getting to grips with um, drawing buildings so that they actually look like building and you know thinking about proportions and perspective not that there's too much perspective going on in this one but um, you know and trying to like things like just simple things like um, the trees in the background not trying to put too much detail in them because they're in the background um, whereas the things at the front are more darker and more detailed so just trying to really think about those sorts of elements as well as like the actual drawing itself you know um so yeah I was like I remember at the time being like yeah this is all right I quite like this and like uh painting like sort of the purplish kind of tones on the ground that was like new to me as well and I was like oh yeah that that looks pretty cool um yeah I can remember being like fairly satisfied so that's nice um so yeah I'm gonna draw it again today I haven't drawn it since this time um, but I, I saw it and I was like, yeah, that'd be a really good one. And I've got a really nice photograph um, to do it from. Um, so yeah, I think it's a good choice. So um, yeah, let's let's see what happens. I feel a bit nervous actually, but um, yeah, let's let's see what happens. So throughout this video, I'm just going to kind of chit chat about um, the things that I'm kind of thinking about that might, you know, be different. Um, in my sketch today than what I would have done like three years ago you know I can notice myself doing certain things without even thinking about it now um, that I just wouldn't have done when I was you know much newer at this um, so I can see here that I am kind of almost mapping things out a bit I'm making like little points with my pencil and just trying to think about how the pub is going to fit on the page properly because you might have noticed the other sketch it kind of really went right to the end of the page and it stops abruptly like that because that was like you know the the middle gutter of the sketchbook you know so I was definitely thinking more about um, how to fit the pub on the page also it's a different orientation slightly as well because I'm using the Hanamula watercolor sketchbook which is A5 um, and the moleskin is a slightly different it's roughly A5 but like it's slightly different dimensions I think it's like longer longer and thinner kind of thing so um, yeah so it's a bit different. Um, I'm obviously kind of blocking in the big shapes here with my pencil and something I would have done years ago is I would have drawn the whole sketch in pencil like quite rigorously you know like with all the details and stuff like that and it makes me smile now because I think about um how nervous I'd be to like kind of go to the ink stage you know and like 
I'd be just like tracing my pencil lines so closely, you know, like, like the whole drawing had to be done in pencil first and then I'd just trace it in ink. Um, and, you know, and I would remember reading advice of other sketches like don't do that, you know, have some confidence, blah, blah, blah. But I think it's just so easy to say that when you have that confidence already and it's like, oh, no, 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 I have to get it perfect in pencil first and then, you know, then I'll just trace it with my pen and, like, I'd be like, ah, oh, damn, I didn't get that line straight. And it's just so funny how much pressure I'd put on myself to get it, like, try and get it all perfect. Um, but now, you know, I don't do that. I just block in the shapes and then I'll go go with a pen and go and do sort of more of the details and stuff. And, like, don't worry if lines are a bit, um, are a bit wonky or whatever, like, you know, it's fine, you know? Um, but again, that just comes with confidence. Like you can't expect a beginner or someone who's fairly new at stuff um, and new at drawing to just be able to nail these things. It literally just comes with time and like coming with sketching every day and eventually not um, putting so much pressure on a sketch and like it having to be perfect and that kind of thing. Um, which to a, to a degree never kind of does go away. I think I was saying to someone else, someone in the YouTube comments the other day is like, I do actually get a bit grumpy if I don't, if I, if my sketch is not as good as I want it to be. And <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just do. I do. I, I don't feel right. I'm like, ah, oh, man, I get really bummed, you know? Um, not saying that my, any of my sketches are perfect, but you know, if I do one that's like really not to what I want it to be, the standard I want it to be at, I, I do get a bit grumpy. Anyway, um, you know, that will take some time, just got to let it go, you know, enjoy the process, don't, you know, depend on the result, all that stuff, all that good stuff, all that wise, all those wise words. Um, so yeah, um, I reckon you may have noticed that I've just, yeah, I was trying to like really pay attention to getting the proportions right in this sketch, so making sure like the angles of the roofs and where like the one roof ends and where the next one starts and trying to just look at like elements of the building in relation to other elements of the building that I've drawn, you know. It's never going to be perfect, like I'm not using a ruler here, I'm not measuring anything, but just, you know, with your eye you can see like the point of the roof um, on the top uh, versus where the point of that sort of middle roof um, on the bottom row, like, you know, how it's not quite in line with the middle and it's just slightly offset to the left, just all that kind of stuff, you know, just kind of measuring with your eye um, and sometimes, you know, with your pen or whatever, looking at the angles um, to just get it roughly right and then that's just going to improve everything immediately, you know. Um, so definitely, yeah, taking notice of where things start and stop um, with other elements that you're drawing, so looking at the proportions. I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys know what I'm talking about there. Um, so um, I feel like now, drawing this now, I'm much more confident with my pen lines. As I said before, I don't worry about them being perfectly neat or straight like I used to back in the day. Um, and I also like, you know, I appreciate that like rougher lines can actually do a good job of like indicating texture and stuff. So like on the on the edge of the roofs there, it's like, I'm not going to draw a straight flat line there because actually there's roof tiles or whatever you call them, you know, um, and actually drawing like a bit of a bumpy line gives it a bit more character and it indicates, you know, the that there's tiles on top of the roof. So kind of, you know, actually you don't need to draw a straight flat line, you know, um, so that can, that can really help. Um, I don't know if you've checked out a urban sketcher called Shoreditch Sketcher. His name's Phil Dean, but on Instagram it's Shoreditch Sketcher. Um, and if you, you know, looking at his sketches, they just look so incredible. But if you go really close in, you'll see how wobbly his lines are. And I, I'm pretty sure he does that on purpose, but still, it just actually proves to you right there in black and white that you do not need to draw straight lines. Um, and that they can have little wobbles in them and actually it just lends so much character to the overall sketch So don't worry about drawing a straight line. I'm, I'm going in here with kind of my black um, brush pen. This is a Copic brush pen um, I bought it because it was the only one in the shop I usually get a micron brush pen, but they didn't have any sold out and I saw this one and it wasn't too too expensive um, so yeah 
that's the only reason I have the Copic, but it does look super fancy, not going to lie. It's got some glitter on it and some nice uh, Japanese? Japanese, Japanese writing on it. It looks pretty cool, so not going to lie. Um, and my new favourite things are these Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pens. So obviously I wouldn't have had these, you know, when I was doing my sketch back in 2017, but, you know, um, that's part of the thing of, you know, going, doing a sketch three years later is that I do have also different supplies and materials to play with and I know how to get better results out of them. Um, so, you know, why not? That's, um, that's another part of the growth over a few years is you have different supplies and you know how to achieve different or better results with them. Um, so you can see I've just plucked in like kind of bits that I'm going to use white gel pen over or some of those front windows kind of thing. Um, so I'm pretty set on uh, moving on to the watercolour now. Um, so I am using different paints also as to what I would have used um, three years ago. Um, and that's actually because I just don't even have the paints that I had three years ago with me. They are back in the UK. I am in South Africa. <clears throat> These are the paints that I have with me, but that's fine. Um, so, and I am using this really nice Escoda brush, which I definitely did not have three years ago. I probably used one of those Aqua brushes, you know, the brushes, uh, the Pentel Aquash brush with the water in the handle. Probably used one of those, to be honest. Um, so, uh, you know, getting a, a better result. And I find that these St. Petersburg White Knights paints are just really nice and vibrant. And that's exactly why I bought them, because I just really love how, how vibrant they are. Um, I bought them because I just fell in love with Alicia Aradia's work and she uses St. Petersburg and her, yeah, the pigments just look so strong and I bought them and that is true. Um, so that's why I like them. But I'm not gonna lie, I do miss my Windsor & Newton slash Daniel Smith, uh, palette that I've got at home in the UK. So, um, I'm looking forward to being re reunited with that. Um, I have actually booked a flight back to the UK end of January 2021 so um, as much as I am gonna miss South Africa and my boyfriend I am also excited about going back to the UK seeing friends and family and being reunited with some of my things that I uh, got separated from um, because of the Covid stuff so yeah some of that is some nice sketchbooks and some nice paints and some other various art materials so I'm really excited about the different YouTube videos I can uh, do once I'm back in the UK because I'll have lots of other art supplies to uh, mess around with and we can experiment further and see what happens so yeah that'd be cool um, so I've put in the sky I've put in the kind of the trees or any of the foliage I was really trying to concentrate on getting different shades of green in the background um, but also I wanted to stick to what I did in my first sketch in 2017 where I didn't put too much details into the trees in the background. They're just in the background and they don't need to be detailed out with any ink or anything like that. Just paint. And I really like that effect actually. Um, I think it really works really well. So um, I, I really liked what I did with that back in 2017. I thought it was a smart move. Um, so yeah, I'm now just going in and sort of like painting the roofs and stuff like that. Um, also definitely kind of doing a bit of wet in wet, kind of blending and stuff like that, which is probably not something I would have been confident enough to do back in my original sketch. Um, just to add a bit of like interest and kind of mix on the page and mix as you go. Um, I definitely don't think I would have been doing that back then. I feel like um, I'm much bolder now with my use of paint. It does help that obviously these paints are kind of quite vibrant, but um, I don't know what I would have been using back in 2017. I don't know if I'd quite got my the Windsor and Newton artist grade like professional paints paint set yet because I know it was around that time that my sister bought me some for Christmas. So yeah, I don't think I would have had those yet. So I might have been using Cotman. I'm not sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so I'm definitely much more confident in painting with watercolour now. Um, I'm not to the level where I could do a proper artistic watercolour painting, but I can definitely um, definitely control it more in this kind of, you know, um, uh, this kind of sketching, you know, this kind of illustrative sort of stuff. 
I think it again comes down to kind of um, just confidence and and practice. You know, it's just something you you just have to do like day in day out. You have to just learn your chops, you know, and you just have to just like playing guitar. Um, someone can tell you how to play certain chords, or someone can tell you how to play that like solo riff or whatever, or solo lead break or whatever. But it's like until you sit down and you practice and you practice and you practice, it's like not until your fingers can remember the, you know, get the muscle memory and you get the timing right and all that stuff. It just comes with time. It just comes with time and practice. There are no shortcuts. Um, but I think it does help like watching other people, watching videos, because you can pick up on certain things um, that will accelerate your skills quicker. Um, for me, definitely learning to really put in dark areas and not be afraid to put in shadows and paint over bits that I've already painted and trying to go in without without any fear, you know, that is definitely the confidence thing. Um, and also just be like, oh, well, if I mess it up, I mess it up, but it'll be a, an important learning point. I'll understand, try and understand what I messed up and why I messed it up, you know. Um, so it's like kind of taking every sketch as kind of a learning point you know like learning something from it taking something away from it it's like oh I really liked how I did that I'm gonna do that in my next sketch or ah don't like how that turned out not gonna do that um so I mean this is this is all but finished I've got some white sort of gel pen bits to add in which I'm doing now um so yeah I'm actually at first I was super nervous like I was like I don't know if this is going to look any different or better but it's really funny like I thought the other sketch was like really quite okay but now I've done it again and I put the two side by side and I'm like oh my god like the progression is actually it's quite a lot um I just didn't yeah so I really encourage you actually to if you've got a sketch that you did a couple of years ago or even a year ago or maybe even six months ago like try and do it again and see put them side by side and just see what happens um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how this came out. So it's, I've done it in a bit of a different way. I've made it a bit, the pub a bit smaller. I've made it fit on the page nicer, um, I think. Um, and I think I've just kind of put more vibrant kind of colors in it. I've paid a bit more attention to textures, um, and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I just think it's, overall like a much more interesting um and dynamic sketch you know um you can tell in my last sketch I obviously didn't have an, a white gel pen because I was trying to do it with a gold pen um and it just didn't work but I think with the addition of actually being able to read the sign on the pub that kind of really helps um so yeah so that's the that's the sketch guys um I hope you've enjoyed sort of seeing the difference um, in progression from 2017 to 2020 um, and I hope you've sort of enjoyed sort of hearing my my notes as to why I think that is and what I've changed what's changed about my process over time um, yeah and I hope it's helpful for um, your sketching practice as well and as I said yeah do give this a go for sure because I think it will give you a real big bump in um, seeing quite how much you've progressed um from that from that last sketch so do give it a go if you if you do um make sure you tag me on instagram because i want to see um the the before and after that'd be cool um so just a quick quick little one um quick little thing at the end here just to remind you i do have an ebook out it is um the last three years of my uh travels across the world um, and it's all of my sort of watercolour and ink illustrations. So it's over 130, I did count, um, ink and watercolour illustrations uh, from travels through 15 different countries across four different continents um, with a few little notes here and there as well. Like if there's something funny or something to note about the sketch, um, I've got those in there as well. So I think if you like my work, then you'll love having a leaf through this, well, a leaf digitally uh, through this book. Um, it's available in PDF format, so you can look at it on, on anything. Um, and obviously it's an instant download as well, so you can get it straight away. Um, it is available uh, in the description below, in the link. 
and you can get a whole 20% off if you use the discount code USKWORLD um, when you get to check out. So um, I'd love it if you check the book out, guys. Do let me know what you think of it if you do get it. Um, and yeah, that's it for this video, really. So I will see you in the next one.